Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from different spectrums of life that just don't know what street or path to walk down. Forget Hope Road. You've well, you've reached to the Trip Over Radio Show. Oh, it's Trip Over Radio Show, an alternative means of psychedelic masturbation here at S Street Media, Brooklyn, Queens. And we are here once again on Sunday nights. And this probably is like the best night for us because it's the night and you ain't got nothing else to do and you didn't masturbate earlier in the day and you wasted a good one and what do you do now? You got nothing to do but turn on to the Trip Up Radio Show and right here at this place right here at S Street Media is where you can catch us. What's going on all my freakers all over the world? Hope everybody's doing good and fine. And, uh, yeah, this is the uh, station, on, or the show, that is, that's an alternative means of psychedelic masturbation. Yes, and we got so many things going on. So this is the place where we can talk freely to our people on the underground scene, people who got vices that no one wants to know nothing about. This is where we all can come and converge. Hey, Greer, this is where we can all do it right here. But before I go on to today's show, let me go ahead and go ahead and just tell everyone who's here. She's one of our more popular people, but she's been away for some time and, and um, you know, she's got some interesting things and projects going on. But she said, you know, I'm going to try to make it back here just for you people, just to get her her feet wet and, you know, doing her things. She's the queen of energy. And she's dominion of all everything yeah, that's like that. energy. Anything that's just her dominion is anything with energy. She is a true soul flower. Everybody give it up for Genergy. Return of Genergy. Oh, goodness. She's always. <laughs> she, has, she usually gives you her customary I did. I little gave finger a piece. thing. I gave a piece. Yeah, a little, little customary thing. And of course. Well, this is a, 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 the other person who's really part of the show. He's he's really, truly the weirdo of the show. But he, he brings such flavor and mischief and mayhem to it. And, and we can't really get off without Hardy Brooklyn. Thank you. Hardy Hardy Brooklyn. Hardy, Hardy Brooklyn. Hardy Brooklyn. And, of course, I'm your boy, Will BK. Oh, hey, Mary, uh, uh, Mary Raymond. She was she was at work at my school when I was uh, from the fifth to seventh grade, and she's tuning in to the trip over. Please don't tell everybody at the, at at, uh, at the school at PS one eighty nine that I've got these this type of show. I don't care if they know or not. But anyway, thanks for tuning in. He really wants you to tell everybody. Yeah, from everybody from my fifth <laughs> to seventh grade, they can get to see uh, what I aspired to be and what I am right now. So hey, that's that's cool. That's pretty yep. cool. You remember <clears throat> fifth yeah. and seventh grade. Well, I go back there for the for the reunions and 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 stuff when the alumni stuff. And I, you know, go and stick my head in there. Nice. Well, not in there, but you know what I mean. Was that two different schools? Well, no. PS one eighty nine. You never went to a PS school. Yeah, but fifth and seventh. Well, from the diff- fifth grade to sixth grade. Well, that's middle grade. school. Sorry, it's all... I was thinking about my school. Yeah, I, mean, I had a uh, high and junior high, no middle. Yeah, so yeah, that's what we were doing. Like, Wait a second. Yeah. I think I a lot of schools, a lot of schools have those those levels all in one one spot they can go and find. So yeah. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and start. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna say that. Have, have you been watching the Aretha series? Have you been watching the Aretha series? I have, but I'm on not. Hulu? I'm not that deep in yet. I'm only on like episode three. Okay. Well, in case for those that do have Hulu and have been watching the uh, Aretha series, what it is, and it's, and it's also, I guess, sponsored by National Ge- Geographic, what it is, is it takes you through different periods of Aretha's life where, you know, uh, you know, from when she was a young girl through, uh, through those days to become a, a star and, you know, dealing with her family and so it really it really touches on period of her life like her first kid she had at 12 years old right she she had her first kid at 12 years old and i think she had her second kid when she was 14 years old but the thing about it is it doesn't tell you you know like who's the father and whatnot. It doesn't, it doesn't touch on who the father is and stuff like that. So there's a lot of gray areas throughout the whole flick. And the, the, the Franklin family isn't um, supporting it. Um, I would imagine not. You know, 
from what from what I've seen so far, I, that's not it's not you don't want to see. Do you like the partying and the um, ch like ch <laughs> with children, like you're you're fucking around with your children. Well, there's, well, you know the thing about it is that, and I'm not knocking uh, CL um, uh, 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 CL uh, Franklin, uh, the great Reverend CL Franklin, but you know the dude honestly historically was into a lot of shit. Yeah, you know, he was into a lot of shit. I meant the thing about it is that um, who's, who's calling me? Oh, I know you. I, I can't answer you right now. While I'm on the phone. I know I can't do it. Can't, doesn't work. Does not work. Oh god, can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. You need to put on "Do Not Disturb." Oh, I know. I, I'm going to learn that next time. So anyway, <laughs> so 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 anyway, um, anyway, going back to the show. Um, the thing about it, stuff the Reverend was into. Yeah, I meant the, I meant aside from the powerful voice he did, the dude was very manipulative. I mean, he kept Aretha out of school. He took her on, you know, he took her on the, on the road. Think about it, because he's a cash cow. He had multiple affairs, um, despite being married and multiple affairs with women. He's got um, he gotten um, he's known as a, a, a molester because he got another twelve year old girl pregnant. He was a father of a 12-year-old uh, girl. He got her pregnant. Well, isn't he the grandfather of his child, too? Well, no, no. He's got a different person. He has a different 12-year-old girl. He got her pregnant. He got Aretha pregnant. That I mean, that, right, he, that's he also, what I'm saying. Right, so he his, got his child, he's, he's also the grandfather to his child. No, he's the father. He's also and the grandfather. The, well, yeah. You, that's what I'm saying. Well, that's yeah. fucked up. Well, yeah. And, <laughs> and the thing about it is that people say that's not true. What makes it true is that every child that Aretha had, she named it after her father, after the father. Every child that she had, they, she named it after the father. Mm -hmm. So the first child that she had was named Clarence, who is Clarence is also her father's birth name. So if you look at, the, if you go in and do some research, you look on the, the comparisons of the two, they are splitting images of each other. Both of them are split, splitting images of each other. So, so it's, uh, what? Oh, uh, there's a game right there. Oh, yeah. So, so aside from that, so aside from, so aside from molestation, aside from the sex parties that he had at the house, parties that he had in the church, he was also arrested. Um, yo, what is going on? Oh, I got you, man. Aside from that, Aside from that, he was arrested for drug smuggling, uh, drug uh, uh, drug trafficking in Miami. He was also um, there's a couple other things he got uh, 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 arrested for and stuff like that. So he's had a history. He's definitely had a history and stuff. And he's also was linked to his wife. He also got linked to his wife to murder, so to speak. Because he, she left, she left, um, she, you know, she left, and she told him, when I get my shit back together, I'm going to send for the kids. But it just so happened, at that time when she's getting ready to send for the kids, she dies. You know, so he didn't want to get rid, he, can't, he knows what he got in Aretha, so, you know, so you can't always be treat, uh, touching these peaches, man. But it's a good story in, some, in certain aspects of it. Everybody's fucking Aretha over Throughout the whole course of her life, uh, Jerry Wexler, who, they had a great long-standing relationship with each other musically, but he never wanted to give her production credit, like as a producer, because she's she the was one. In there doing every she was little, the one who's really was doing all the work. So, yeah, and and she definitely was and uh, he never he de he never let her get it. Other than I think the last album they worked together. Well, I know the the gospel album was the only one that I know that they. Um, uh, he gave her production credit on, and he was afraid to go to hell. If he well, didn't. no, he just maybe just said, "Fuck it, just go ahead." It's a gospel album. It'd be, it'd be a shame. It'd be fucked up for him to take gospel, uh, uh, produce a gospel album when he's never right. done no, one. No, and he's got nothing and, to do with that. And or so knows nothing about it. It's like, yeah, but you know, but you know, but but anyway, just you know, check it out. Um, and like I said, you, and 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 then he died. He got and he died how he lived. He died violently. Two people, two dudes was coming to burglarize the, the spot, and then they had a shootout and they got him. They shot him when he got shot in the groin, Ooh. and he got shot in the knee, mm -hmm. and he went into a five year coma before oh, wow. they finally so pulled the plug on him. Wow. So yeah, so you know. Well, they got but, to pay for that. So. 
you know. Right. <laughs> That's a long time to be in a coma. Wow. I mean, but Aretha, <laughs> yeah. Five I mean, years. Five like, years. It's like, yo, 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 how much longer do you want to? How much longer do you want to do this? You know. And on top of that, I mean, Rita had her shit too. Rita definitely had her shit too. Like one of the things in the movie on, on um, um, Sparkle, first, um, um, what's his name? Uh, what's the guy's name that that got paralyzed? Uh, I'm your pusher man. What's his name? I'm your pusher man. Oh, Curtis Curtis. Mayfield. Curtis Mayfield. He actually was he put the, the soundtrack together, Sparkle. He originally asked Aretha, did she want to do something on it? And she said, nah, I'm, you know, kind of busy. So they asked Aretha's sister uh, or, um, to do something because she's always been doing backup. And a lot of times she did backup for Aretha. So then she was, so <clears throat> while Aretha was going through that down, down slide, you know, her, her, her career was kind of going down. You know, he was like, yo, you know, you, this, this opp- you should let me, you know, produce. He said, she's looking for a producer. He's saying, well, you know, I'm still doing this project with, you know, with Sparkle. Like she's, a comeback. Yeah, oh, you know, so, I, well, it's not a comeback. She just, she needed something. She needed a fresher sound. Yeah. So, he, so, so she thought about it. Well, look, you know, I'll work with you. And at the same time, I'll do the song for you. And dude said, well, what, <clears throat> what about your sister? Rita was like, well, she'll be, uh, she'll get over it. Okay, so mm. she took that song from her, and she, one of the songs was giving him something that he can feel. That was supposed to be Aretha's sister, but she took the song and she did it. <clears throat> so you know, wow. see some some shit like this. That's, but that's industry shit. That's right. fucking definitely industry shit. So on Hulu, but everybody, all well, everybody does that in that industry. Uh, like, that's well, not strictly reserved to. Uh, Classic people. Well, yeah, but but yeah, but yeah, but still, that's but that's family. But you know, that's you know, she should have, she at least should have said something. She just Rita just straight up took it, like, and it wasn't until, like years later, as per the story, that she finally said, "I'm sorry, I should have, I, I should when I do what I did to you," and you know, and actually, she thought that she was gonna win the Grammy that year, but Natalie Cole beat her out. Um, and I know Rita didn't like that shit, but anyway, <laughs> fuck her. Anyway. Um, so you yes. know how hard I work to get this song or to steal this song. <clears throat> yeah, man, it's fucked up. But you know, oh well, teach his own. But anyway, anyway, definitely watch preacher men. Watch some preacher men and shit, man. They'll definitely get you fucked up. Um, you, you know, you 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 confessing your souls and your sins to them, and they and they'll and they'll predicate on it, even though it's not a word. But a damn sure will 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 uh, definitely follow you. Um, you know what I'm saying? So that, so much for that. Um, what else is going on? Um, <clears throat> Ooh, legalizing. Yeah, sex um, work. There are cities. There are cities throughout the United States that are now going to be uh, decriminalizing a sex work, and um, it, you know whether that's New York and they're doing New York, Baltimore, a few places, and um, they're going. Um, and it's a good thing because one mm-hmm. thing is about it is the majority of these 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 cases are people of color. Transgender, um, you know, you know, people in in that sector. So now they just can't um, um, just pick on one particular race and put them in jail for a certain amount of time and stuff. Just you know. So, what do you think about that? Go ahead. I Anyone? think a lot of places are not looking at it holistically <clears throat> enough, and they're not putting any protections in place for the workers. They're basically just legalizing and then saying you're on your own, baby, to protect yourself. Well, yeah, I guess you can you can say that. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they're going to be allowed. Um, what are, are they going to be allowed to do uh, precautions? If they're going to allow them to do that, you know, are the spines going to be smaller? Are you just not finding them at all. Are you going to, you know, you are they? You make sure they have masks. Are you making sure they have rubbers? You know, you know what? Are, I wonder what would be the criteria for them to protect themselves and protect their johns. I wonder what, what they're going to be doing. Well, I mean, I think that they need to look at it really from protecting the worker. Mm. Because it's all about the right now, until now, the worker has been completely unprotected. And the way that most places are moving forward, the worker is still completely unprotected because they're not legalizing it. They're decriminalizing it. Okay. And it's still illegal pretty much on a federal level as well, just like weed is. In a lot of places, so we have to take a step back, and we have to put places into like places where they can go work, where you're not risking taking a job to an alley, or taking them back to your own apartment, where 
you know, there's not somebody where you don't have the doorman of the building where it's not a hotel or a specific facility where security is on the worker side. Mm -hmm. right? And there's the places that it has worked in the world successfully are places where you go to a location where the protect where you're using their facility. They're not going back to your house. Maybe they might be able to leave the facility, but that's like for the super experienced <clears throat> workers. That's after you've seen that John or girl or guy or his or her for multiple times. Okay, you're you're protecting yourself. Yeah, that's true. because this is, and this is still <coughs> a, unfortunately, even those workers, even those workers are not white males. It's still a white male world, mm. and we have to protect those workers because that worker comes back to the white man's house. All of a sudden, something's missing from the house. What happens? Yeah, but well, so what, there's there's no protections in place for those people. We're creating a situation that could potentially end up being worse. No, yeah, that that is that is also true. That's also true. Is there so what are so what would so if it was up to you, then how would you how would you structure it? Um, I would legalize it, not decriminalize it. Okay, so decriminalizing uh, just means what smaller fines, or smaller just don't go to jail. Just, no, for decriminalizing it. means the DA doesn't prosecute. Okay. The law is still on the books, but the DA has opted not to prosecute. Okay. In, a lot of, in, in most of these situations is what they're doing. Or they're basically passing laws to say, well, look the other way if it's this or that. So what they need to do, though, is they need to make it, this is fully legal. This is a type of job. Mm -hmm. A sex worker is a type of job. A sex worker that does BDSM is a type of job. Because mm -hmm. they're very different. A sex Somebody that has sex with you is very different than mm -hmm. somebody that is doing a fetish scene with you. I can hear you do that. It's like into, right? Like and that type of thing. Correct. And those places, and in order for that to work, we have to put rules and regulations in so that if the, the worker feels threatened, mm -hmm. there should be a number they can call. Whether mm -hmm. it's the police or something where they know that they're going to get instant response, not... Oh, as opposed really? to you had it coming, you asked for this, right? Those mm -hmm. type of that was negotiated pre four. That was the agreement, you know, it, and it, and to allow the boundaries and the consent to be actually followed through and taken care of. But how would but how would outside of the, the the consenting parties? How would and let's say the police is called? How is how is it believable what the terms were or are? Like if like like if you say, well, you know, if some let's say something happens, police is called, and one person is saying he promised to da 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 da. Well, he promised. That's not what she said. You know, how was that decided, or or how do you know this been trouble, or how do you how do how does any think, of that? I feel like all those decisions would only be those conversations would only be had if it was like I'm a se I'm a sex worker and I work at such and such, like they're out of like an office. If it was at that point, which is not, and probably and isn't going to be for a very long time, right. do you know what I'm saying? Like nobody's going to be. If if you like, w we went to Vegas. Somebody had Bud in their in their bag. The 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 bag handlers took the Bud. You're not calling the airline to report that your Bud was taken because you were taking it there illegally. So right. even though it's decriminalized, it's still not <laughs> something that they're going to be like, oh, let me call the police because you promised me a blowjob and you only gave me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't think and those, those mm -hmm. calls are going to even be made. And, and it's even more of that there are so many Johns that don't respect the worker, whether they be trans, bi, gay. Most Johns don't respect the worker, and the worker's life is usually taken into risk every single time they do a scene. So if we had places like in Amsterdam where districts or areas that people would know to go and the networkers would know that it's safe to be there because there's a big red button in the room that I can press and there's going to be a security guard that's going to come in and I'm not at the John's house and I'm not at a private hotel with the John, so there's no chance of me stealing from the John because right. the John is locking their stuff up. Right, 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 right. And those are the those are the things that's going to start to happen. Is once it gets decriminalized, the Johns are going to be like, well, I don't want to pay this now. Instead of just not paying them, they're going to just blame them for other things. Well, that is true. That is everything. And we need to protect them from that because mm -hmm. they they're doing an amazing service to society. Agreed. I wonder how would, how would you put that on your how would you put that on your taxes if you're going to be doing taxes? You know, hooker, humper. 
It would just be sex worker. Sex worker. (laughs) Sex worker. Okay. Ow. You you wonder if they paid by the O's. How many, you know, how many orgasms have you had? Or or if the orgasms, are are they deductible? You know, stuff like that. Those are, those are, you know, how do you, how do you itemize? In a perfect world, you'd be able to deduct your orgasms. And and it's the the same way as just defining what a sex worker is. You know. Because technically, a cuddler is considered a sex worker as far as the state's concerned. And she's not doing any sex. Wow. A femdom who's not having any sex that's just literally whipping a guy with a whip is considered a sex worker in most states. Wow. Because it's a fetish and then it's seen as something sexual. Dirty. Even if there's nothing sexual going down ever. Mm. I mean, yeah. I wonder if those things would be itemized, though. <laughs> Are those itemized everything that you do? That would be an interesting time to be an accountant to, to be doing their paperwork, you know what I mean? Checking out the itemizations and... Receipts from like sex toy shops and stuff like that. I mean, they need to. That we need fun. to come up with benefits for them. They need to be able to get health insurance because we want our sex workers to be healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, they they should be able to get Medicaid or Medicare, or whatever, depending on their age. You know, they should be able to get into the system and not be shunned because of what they do. I think they should put. There should be an entertainment. I guess that be under under TNA or, or TNA. something. Oh, that's gone. I well, guess. That deduction's gone. <laughs> you know, who knows? Unless you make a lot of money, that's gone. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. So anyway, we're actually going to come right back on the Triple Radio Show. We're going to come back, talk about some more things. One of the things that we're going to talk about is do people have the right to tell other people not to come to a funeral? Um, you know, something like that. It, it, I think it depends on if you have purple or not. Okay. Well, we'll we'll find that out when we come right back. Triple Radio Show and Alternative Means Psychedelic Masturbation. Your boy Will BK, Jenna G, Hardy Brooklyn. We'll be right back on Street Media. Be right back. <laughs> 